So today I'm going to be talking about burnt out PTO switches and how to possibly solve that issue. So I got a machine here and the guy basically had uh, a no PTO start issue. He would pop his PTO switch, nothing would happen. Now I worked on this machine previously. It's a white outdoor zero turn. You can check that video out in the top right of your screen. Now if you haven't seen that video, I would highly recommend watching that first just to get an idea of things, but to kind of fill you in if you're not going to watch that and the PTO would not engage. After diagnosing a few things, I found that it was a left hand reverse safety switch that was bad. So I replaced that and it worked right away. And then about two and a half weeks later, he called me up and just said, uh, the PTO switch he would pop it and nothing would happen and he said that he thinks it was just a faulty PTO switch at which point I had another one in stock so I gave it to him he popped it in and it said it worked perfectly fine so we just assumed that uh, it was just a bad PTO switch he did not tell me though that he was running into melting PTO switches so we can see here that uh, a couple of the connectors are bent and twisted and you guys can actually probably make it out that they're starting to melt this was melting melted and I never knew that because he didn't show me. Now if you're running into an issue of melted PTO switches or your wires are getting really hot, you have an amperage issue, uh, specifically too many amps. Normally the number one cause of uh, burnt out PTO switches is your PTO itself. You have a magnet here and essentially it just uh, engages, it sends an electrical current through and the magnet picks up on a disc which then transfers your crankshaft power to your pulley down there and basically turns your belts. So you guys will be able to hear it click. So what you get is essentially more or less resistance when we test these two connectors and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So you're gonna need a multimeter and you're gonna to have to probe the wires. Now if it's on the machine, you could technically back probe so it's good to separate the PTO by itself so that you can directly probe the terminal here. And a PTO on average is supposed to have anywhere from two to four ohms of resistance. So you're gonna take your multimeter here and you're gonna set it to ohms and we're running it on 200 because we're testing in between two to four. You guys can see that right now it's an average of uh, 0, 0 0.5 ohms of resistance and we're supposed to have two to four. So what's happened here is we have a short somewhere in the windings, the magnetic pickup inside of this PTO and because it has a short, it's drawing more amperage through the system and these two wires go back to the PTO switch and that's what's burning out the PTO switches. So I have a new PTO switch that I'm going to be running and I just purchased a new PTO for my customer. This is an Outdoor Power Extreme PTO. He opted for the aftermarket one. This is the aftermarket. Now the one that came on it was an Ogura. It's a GT1A-MT09. Now the Warren PTO said is a factory replacement, so possibly a factory replacement for this one here. That ran for about $500, and this extreme PTO clutch ran for $285, so my customer always at their discretion what parts they run when I give them the option between OEM or aftermarket, and he chose aftermarket, so we're going to be setting this up, but before I hook it up, I'm going to test the resistance on this just to show you guys what a PTO should properly test like. And the number for this is a Stens 255295X, that's for the extreme. And this replaces the Warner 5219-99. And if you guys can see here, they pack these things full of anti-corrosion grease. So that goes in there and that prevents resistance from building up from rust or corrosion on that connector, which is nice to see. So again, with your multimeter set to 200 ohms of resistance, I've taken my leads here and I've just plugged them into the terminal. Now the horizontal connector there, that's your positive, it says red, and on the vertical here, that's your negative. But you guys can see I have that plugged in and we're measuring 3.3 ohms of resistance. So again, PTOs are supposed to measure on average two to four and we're measuring 3.3. So this PTO is good, which it obviously should be because it's brand new so I'm going to disassemble all of this I'm going to uh, clip off this uh, zip tie we're going to hook this onto the machine and uh, test everything out okay so just comparing my PTOs here I don't have a washer on the original one but the new one has I guess you could call that a thrust washer 
And on the flip side of this, we have a little adapter spacer here. So that's gonna have to get some nickel anises put onto it. But this is how I pulled off the original one. And I guess my customer or someone else might have had this off already. But like I said in my video, we just had an issue where it wouldn't engage. So all I did was do a 12 volt test to make sure that the PTO itself engaged, where we back probe that connector put 12 volts to it, it clicked, and that let me know that the PTO itself was good. But what that didn't let me know was whether or not the windings in here had a short or some kind of issue, and that was the problem. So again, once I found out that he was melting PTO switches, then I knew right away the PTO had to be replaced. So it's just a case of R&R, &R, guys, which is remove and replace. Again, I'm just gonna have to go and look through, but it appears the way they ship this is this goes on the top, this washer here, the thick one, So we're going to be torquing that to 50 to 55 foot pounds and again you could just go ahead and measure your bolt there whether it's a 3 8 or a 7 16 or an m10 but in this case we're going to run about 50 foot pounds of torque on this and just something to be aware of there are two different length bolts the original one is slightly longer however it had a lock washer so if you add the thicknesses of those washers it brings it up to the same thread length so again, I'm gonna be using the new bolt even though it doesn't have a lock washer on it because they don't give you one. And like I said, we're gonna be using a little bit of Permatex nickel anises and I'm just gonna be putting that onto the adapters and the washers. So if this ever needs to come apart for whatever reason, then he can take it off and he won't have to worry about things seizing. Because you have to remember, if a PTO ever seizes to a shaft, it's unlike a pulley that you can kind of heat up or you know take a pry bar to and mangle. These are gonna be difficult to get at and you're not gonna be able to run a torch in there to heat things up to expand them. So again, you wanna make sure you're running some kind of anti-seize to make sure that if these ever have to come off, they come off nicely. Okay, so I got the new PTO installed and I've torqued it to 50 foot pounds, just like the instruction said. So I'm gonna put a new PTO switch in it and we're gonna test this thing out. And I'm just gonna be using a little bit of Permatex dielectric grease on my connector here. So same as the PTO plug had, I'm gonna do that for the PTO switch. And like I said, brand new PTO switch, install that, everything should work. Okay, so I just got back from my neighbor's house. I went and cut my front yard and I went and cut my buddy Kyle's. He lives two doors down. So I cut his front yard as well. I just wanted to use the machine and put it under a load. And what I was kind of feeling for after I stopped cutting was to see if the switch was hot. And I went and felt up underneath just to see if any of the wires were warm and everything seems to be good. Everything's cool to the touch. There's no heat in the plug. It was in fact the PTO that needed to be replaced. And I mean, the resistance test showed that the old PTO was only testing 0.4 ohms and the new one was testing 3.5, which is again supposed to be anywhere between two to four ohms. And that's it guys, so this thing is done, ready to be returned back to the customer. Fingers crossed, there's no other issues with anything relating to the wiring or electronics. Before I take